With episode 6 of Shogun just being released, I think you know what that means. Yep, it's the day after and I normally delve into the real history behind a character in the show and explain the similarities and differences between real life and fiction. I've done John Blackthorne, Toronaga, Mariko, Ishido, and now it's time to delve into the Puppet Master that we've started seeing getting a main focus as the episodes have gone on, and the person who's leading the Council of Regents, and that is Lady Yochiba no Kata. So with that, let's jump into the video and break down the real-life historical figure, compare her to the character in the show, and also see what could lie in store for the character. So let's get into it. Here is the real story of Lady Yochiba no Kata explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. So Lady Ochiba properly arrived on our screens in Shogun at the end of Episode 5. We saw brief moments of her during the beginning of Episode 2 when the Taiko was dying, where she was suspicious of Toranaga. But it was at the end of Episode 5 and throughout Episode 6 where we saw exactly the type of person that she was, and the hold that she had over the Council of Regents. Lady Ochiba no Kata is actually based on a real historical person called Yodo Dono, but is also known as Lady Chacha. Like in the show, she was the concubine to the ruler at the time and the former Taiko, the Taiko Toyotomi Hideyoshi, and she was the only person that was able to give the Taiko a son, but most importantly, an heir, which meant that the ruling of Japan would follow in line. She gave the Taiko two sons, but one of them died very young. However, like was seen in the show with the death of the Taiko, it meant that Ieyasu Tokugawa, the person that Yoshi Toranaga is based on, saw an opportunity to try and clinch power, and he betrayed the Council of Five Elders. Within the show, we saw that Lady Ochiba's father was killed at the hands of Mariko's father. However, the line of relations is something that isn't actually the same in reality. Oda Nubunaga, the daimyo that was killed at the hands of Tamako's father, the person that Mariko is based on, was actually Yodo Dono's uncle and not her father. So that is one major difference in the show compared to the real life history. Plus, Tamako was actually killed at the point where Ishida Mutsunari, the person that Ishido is based on, held the regents and general's family members hostage in Osaka. So Mariko and Dochiba's relationship is something that does seem to be more fictitious than filled with truth. Hence the slight change of relationship from uncle to father, maybe to make it even more personal, so that could be a sign of what's to come in the future episodes. Following the Taiko's death, that was something which led the Toyotomi clan to lose a lot of its support and following, which meant that Yododono set out to restore the Toyotomi clan that once ruled in the attempt of holding onto that power. She essentially acted as the de facto head of Osaka Castle when she moved to Osaka Castle following Hideyoshi's death. So that could be why we're seeing her commanding the Council of Regents within the show. Her son was heir, but was too young to be able to lead, hence why the Council of Regents were elected upon the Taiko's death. So that is something that is the same within the show as it was in reality. The hatred towards Ieyasu Tokugawa is something that is present on the screen when we see Lady Ochiba speaking about Toranaga and trying to get Ishido to command the Army of the West against him. The hatred towards him is something that was actually the case in reality, but it seems like that could well be getting drawn from something which occurred later on than when the show is said. Something from 1615, but we'll get to that. That was called the Siege of Osaka. Yododono had two sisters and both of them took the side of the Tokugawa clan and were prominent members of it. This was something which was vital to making the relationship between the two most powerful clans have a sense of diplomacy between them at the time. When Toyotomi Hideyoshi, the Taiko, was alive, it was said that it was rumored that Yododono could have been the person that was behind the death of Hideyoshi. This is because it was mentioned that she was constantly speaking highly of Toranaga and trying to push him higher up the ranks. So to outside eyes, there was speculation on the type of person that she was, and it was said that she was perceived to be a wicked individual. We've not really had that feeling from Lady Ochiba in the show, because it seems like she's very much against Toranaga, and that's when we've entered. However, in episode 2, there was a moment where the Taiko said that there was almost a time where she could have ended up with Toranaga. So it showed that maybe there is a bit of history between the characters in some capacity, more than what we've been able to see. I believe it's said that because once the Taiko died, the widow of the Taiko was encouraging Ochiba and Toranaga to marry so that there'd be a sense of unification amongst the two clans. However, obviously, that didn't happen. This is where I'm going to be giving spoilers on the real history that the show is based on. When it came to the infamous Battle of Sekigahara, something which was poignant for the outcome of the fate of Japan at the time and the battle that we're essentially seeing the show building towards with the Western Army led by Yoshido and the Eastern Army led by Toranaga, Yododono wasn't directly involved in that. 
However, following Torunaga winning, and with several thousand Toyotomi vassals participating in the battle, it meant that relations between the Tokugawa clan and the Toyotomi clan started to disintegrate, and it meant that Ieyasu Tokugawa, as the victor, then started to divide up the family area of Toyotomi as a prize for winning the battle, and it meant that Yododono had less control. During this time, there was what one would call a slight power divide. Yododono's son and the former Taiko son, Hideyori, was within Osaka Castle and was laying claim to it. However, Ieyasu Tokugawa and Hideyori had conflict between them and many of the people that would have once been in support of Hideyori were now in support of Ieyasu Tokugawa, who was now named the Shogun by the Emperor of Japan. This was something which Yododono didn't agree with and resisted because she felt that her son was the rightful heir. When it came to the siege of Osaka, Ieyasu Tokugawa viewed Hideyori as a problem as he was in his way of unifying Japan, something that was his main plan. So Tokugawa then led a siege on Osaka Castle with the intention of killing the boy and his mother if she got in his way. With the attack on the castle taking place and there being some casualties, Yododono came out and put forward a treaty of peace, one which she thought would keep her and her son alive. This was something that was accepted by both Tokugawa and Yododono. However, one year later, Ieyasu Tokugawa went against the peace treaty and tried to attack Osaka Castle again, and he was successful in doing so. However, there was no way out for Yododono and her son in this instance. So as Osaka Castle was engulfed in flames, Yododono and her son committed seppuku in the flames, and it put an end to the Toyotomi clan which once ruled and which once had Ieyasu Tokugawa alongside them. Within history, it's often questioned if Yododono and her son did actually die on the night that Osaka Castle was attacked for the second time. There were no witnesses that were present when they both died, and Yododono's body was never found, so it is often theorized that maybe herself and her son managed to escape the attack, and then, after fleeing, were able to survive. But with no records of her afterwards and there being multiple theories about her escape route, all that it seems to be is just speculation. It very much feels like Lady Ochiba has a lot of trouble that's going to be coming her way. She seems to have the confidence attitude that Yododono was said to have, the loyalty to her son in being prepared to do anything to stand by him and to make sure that he fulfilled his legacy of becoming the Taiko. But there also seems to be added levels of depth that are present with the history with Mariko that we've not really delved into and how that will impact what's going to happen. Mariko's father killed Ochiba's father, and Mariko is loyal to the very person that is a threat to Ochiba's son's life. So the dynamic between all of them is one that's definitely most interesting and filled with hostility. I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to come of the character, as right now she's being positioned more as the leader than Ishido, and she's dripping the poison into many people's ears. It's a role that's vital for a show and dynamic like this, and it's going to be interesting to see if her death is something that will be depicted on screen, just like what happened with Yododono. So, there you have it, Shogun Lady Ochiba no Kata's real story explained. 